I'm going to one more time. Touch our sinus, touch our throat one more time, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We're back. If you're watching us here at Unity NBC on YouTube, we're grateful, we're thankful. Hit the subscribe button. Let us know what you're thinking about what we're doing here. And all we're doing is telling you about the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And from the Bible, from Genesis to the book of, I guess we'll help if I grab a microphone, from Genesis to the book of Malachi, from Matthew to the book of Revelation. Oh, what a time we have. We're taking another break from Romans today, and we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna come from what's known as the 100 number, 107th number of Psalms, Psalms 107. The verse is coming from verse 27, but leave your Bible open because we're gonna make frequent alliterations to the word of God. Psalms 107, verse 27. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. Listen to this again. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. And we're going to use for a subject today, at their wits end. All of you know somebody that is at their wits end. Everybody knows somebody who's having problems and it seems like they can't solve those problems. My brothers and my sisters, look to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help cometh from the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. I know we live in times and people don't know how they're going to make it. They're at their wit's end. Now that concept of the wit's end, a lot of people say, well, where did that come from? Many people say it came from the William Langland poem. That was way back in 1370, um, was an Englishman, and he says astronomers are also at their wit's end. But the concept of being at the wit's end goes further back than that. A lot of people say, where did it come from? Did it come from Plato? No. Did it come from Aristotle? No. Did it come from Socrates? No. Did it come from William, uh, excuse me, I called his name wrong. Did it come from Marcus Aurelius? No. Or his son, Commodus? No. The concept of contemplation of something that you cannot solve or a problem that you have came from the word of God. And here it is in what's known as book five of the 107th number of Psalms. And book five is Psalms 107 all the way to 150. Those number of Psalms are what's known as book five. So when we, when we look at this, having our being at our wit's end and people contemplating and talking about it and dealing with it come from the word of the true and the living God. It came from the Bible. It came from the, this in this, this, this area, the Old Testament. So brothers and sisters, everybody wants to say, well, the Bible is old fashioned. The Bible is out of style. No, look into the word of God. The Holy Ghost will give you power and strength and let you glean from the words of the true and the living God, no matter what your problem or your situation is in your life, no matter how erudite you think you are, no matter how intelligent you think you are, no matter your education, no matter your station, no matter your vocation, it is still, our wherewithal is still in the word of the true and the living God. Hallelujah. Psalm, once more, Psalms 107, let's look at the first verse. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Listen at this, for his mercy endures forever. Verse two, let the redeem of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Hallelujah. No matter what you're dealing with or who you're dealing with, 
When you're walking with the Lord, the Lord will give you power and he will redeem you and keep you from your enemies. I, I never will forget. I was in a situation many years ago and I was at my wit's end. Remember, that's where we started at, in the wit's end. And these people were really giving me heck on the job. And I remember telling my father, clearly on a Thursday, I said, Dad, and these people, he says, boy, listen, give it to the Lord. Let the Lord handle this. Because I was at my wit's end. I didn't know what I was going to do. These people were really getting on my last nerve. So he, when I listened to what he said and I prayed about it that night, I prayed about it the next morning. When I went to work that day, which was on Friday, these people had a party for me and said they were sorry for making my way hard. I was at my wit's end, but I gave it to the Lord. That's why when it says, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 5 in the 107th number of Psalms. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen at this. Then they cried out to the Lord. Now, four places in this 107 number of Psalms, it says, uh, then they cried out to the Lord. Now, some versions of the Bible say, Lord, help. Antonai, help. Yahweh, help. El Nisi, help. You calling out to the Lord in such a, here's a big word for you, in a cathartic way. Every being, part of your being is calling out to the Lord. Sometimes when you're at your wit's end, you got to call out to the Lord. There's certain, there's some things that happen and it looks like I'm not going to make it, but yeah, you're going to make it because the Lord, you're a child of the Most High God. You're going to make it. Cry out to the Lord. So when we get to verse Six. That's the first one. It says, Lord, help. They cry out of the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress, and he led them forth by the right way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue on. Verse 10. Those who sat in darkness and are in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and onions. Now, this particular verse is what we would call in Christology a alliteration to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Luke 1 79 says to give light to those, listen at this, who sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace shalom, into the way of shalom into the way of peace hallelujah Hallelujah today. So we're seeing Christ in these words that we're reading here. Verse 11. Because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. When you come at people and you say you're at your wit's end. You don't know which way you're going to go. And you go, <clears throat> why don't you pray about it? No, that's not going to help. And I see no people have done that. That's not going to help. Why don't you go and read the Bible? That's not going to help. Why don't you go and talk to a preacher? That's not going to help. Why don't you go and talk to one of the deacons? That's not going to help. I want to go and talk to one of the old mothers in the church. I don't want to talk to them. What you're doing is, in verse 11, you're rebelling against the words of God and despising the counsel of the Most High God. You can't uh, go against the counsel of the Most High God. <clears throat> there are sometimes... You got to talk to people. Sometimes you got to talk to someone. There were many a times uh, when I start, first started preaching and certain things would come up, I would go to my father. And then because of the relationship I had with several of the senior pastors in town, uh, I could I had the privilege, if I want to, I could have went to them because of the relationship they had with my father. I never despised counsel. That's one reason why some people are at their wit's end because they despise counsel. Don't despise counsel. Stay with, get with, glean the word of the true and the living God. Hallelujah. Here we are, verse 13. They cried out. Here we go again. Lord, help. Lord, help. 
help in their trouble. He saved them out of their distress. Oh my God. So there's some people that will say, preacher, you don't understand. I let my wits in. Yes, I do. Give it to the Lord. <clears throat> you don't understand. I can't make it. Yes, you can. Give it to the Lord. You don't understand. I'm desperate. Have you ever been around somebody who's desperate? They'll do anything. They'll say anything. They'll go anywhere. They'll do anything. But you can't let yourself get to the point where you're being guided by your, you're being desperate. Give that to the Lord. That's why in that text it says, Lord, help. I can't face tomorrow. Yes, you can. I don't care how bad it is. Lord, help. Give it to the Lord. There was a situation in this very church many years ago. And it was cold and rainy and dark. And I remember that day laying down on the floor here and praying. Oh, I must have prayed for like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I got up and here it is. When I got up off of the ground, as I was getting up, the Lord told me what the answer was going to be. I didn't want to hear it. Though. I didn't want to accept it. But getting back to what I said earlier, you've got to accept wise counsel. So I had to accept it. Thank God for it and move on. Hallelujah. And later on down the road, the situation ended up working itself out. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall and will direct thy path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Hallelujah. So that was another version of chapter, verse 13. Lord, help. Hallelujah. Verse 14, he brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains in pieces. There are times when you've been in a situation and it gets to the point where how are you going to get out of it? I've known of men on their way to jail, on their way to jail. What well, nothing to do, never do, but get ready for the only sandwiches and wear an orange jumpsuit. But here it is. The Lord intervened in the situation. And those same men went free. Never had to do a day in jail. I'm telling you what I've seen when people are at their wit's end, give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 16. For he has broken the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron in two. Now what's so interesting about this text is in those days, if something was made of bronze and if something was made of iron, it depended on who smelted and who put it together. All bronze wasn't the same bronze. All iron wasn't the same iron. So that meant that you could take a certain piece of iron and break iron with it. Or you could go in with bronze and break bronze with other bronze and break it in half because they were smelted in a different way. They were put together. They were configurated in a different way depending on who made them. The Lord, no matter how hard that iron is, no matter how hard that uh, bronze is, the Lord can break it. The Lord can take it and put it in two. And everybody's saying, how did you get out of that situation? The Lord. How did you make it? The Lord. You were at your wit's end. I know, but I gave it to the Lord. How did you make it? How did you per persevere? How did you climb up out of the miry pit? I did it because of not me, not anything I did. I could probably would have messed it up, but I gave it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, when we look at this, uh, as we get to verse 20, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Listen to that word. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. How, where do we get that from? We look at Matthew, the eighth chapter, verse um, the eighth. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. Ooh, hallelujah. And speak a word and my servant will be healed. Verse 17 of that same Matthew, the eighth chapter. He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. Who is it that we're talking about? We're talking about the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Yahshua, HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ. 
And as we do that, as we come into that verse 20, we are again in verse 19. They cried out to the Lord that says in another version, Lord, help. Oh, if more people today would say, Lord, help. Oh, Lord, please help me. If more people could say that, if more people could put that in their mind, put it on a speed dial in your mind when things get back, Lord, help. When it looks like I'm not going to make it, Lord, help. We'll put everybody, we'll put all the therapists we can find, all the self-help books we can find, but put the Lord in that situation. Let the Lord help you, my brothers and my sisters. Sometimes those people will say, I'm perplexed. Give it to the Lord. I'm at my wit's end. I'm perplexed. Yes, but give it to the Lord. Try, I try everything, but I don't have any success. I've done everything, everything I could think to do. Give it to the Lord. It's an unsolvable problem. And I've had people in my life, they've had unsolvable problems and unsolvable situations. But again, when I, I've seen with my eyes, when people said, Lord, help, I'm at my wit's end. The Lord stepped into the situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. It was a lady that we knew way back in, I think it was 1974, and they had given her up, and she wasn't going to make it. The cancer had eradicated her, was tearing her, but here it is, the Lord stepped into a situation. This doctor said, there's no help, there's nothing to be done. I remember my father praying at this woman's bed, and Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know, if thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? When I've seen people pray like that, there's a change that comes over the situation. My own mother, when I was sick many years ago, and they gave me up. My mother stood in that hospital room and held her hand up. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know of. Thy wish draw thyself from me. Whither shall I go? It was a messed up situation. We were at our wit's end, but the Lord healed me and brought me back. Oh, won't you trust him today? Won't you believe in him today? Won't you follow him today? Won't you lift up your voice as a voice on a, a trump out of Zion and declare to the world about the goodness and the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Verse 21. Oh that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. No matter what, always give thanks to the Lord. People say, well, but I mean, I, I can't think about that. Right? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can thank, give God thanks no matter what. Don't be talking about, well, oh, when, my, when my mind is more clear. Don't you know the old folks used to say that he was a heart fixer and a mind regular? Give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. Verse 23. And those who go down to the sea in ships who do business on great waters. They see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. This is, if you look at, know anything about pneumonology, about the study of the Holy Ghost, this is a uh, type and shadow of the Holy Ghost. Romans 5, 5. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in the hearts by the Holy Ghost that was given to us. Don't you know that when you became a child of the Most High God, you've been given the Holy Ghost? Call on the power of the Holy Ghost. Some people don't want to do that. They think they know better. Auntie knows better. My work co-worker knows better. I've seen some people that should have, should have, should have been crawling on the floor crying out to the Lord, but they won't do it. Let the Holy Ghost come into your life and tell you what to say, tell you what to do, and you'll be able to take the authority, I say this all the time, over any situation in your life. When the Holy Ghost is in control of the life, people still say, I'm at my wit's end. I'm at my wit's end. Preacher, you don't understand. I can't go any further. Yes, you can. You say, but I'm at my wit's end. You can go further under the unction of the Holy Ghost. My mind can't think of any other outcome. There's always another outcome. We're human beings. 
We're frail creatures, but there's always, listen to me, always an outcome when you follow under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. But logic makes no sense. I'm at my wit's end. This is an illogical situation. When you're not Mr. Spock on Star Trek, God is in control of the logic. Give it to the Lord today in these last and evil days. It might be illogical and you might be at the end of your wit's end, but give it to the Lord. Hallelujah. We're just about through here. I'm frustrated. A lot of people get frustrated. I can get frustrated. Sometimes I think, well, Lord, this isn't going the way I want it to go. Mm -hmm. No, you stand up straight and go and pray and lift your uh, uh, mind up on high and give it to the Lord. No matter what you think, give it to the Lord. No matter what your best friend thinks, give it to the Lord and stand by the word of the true and the living God. We're just about through here as we get down to see verse 24. Hallelujah. Um, to see the works of the Lord as one is in the deep. Verse 27. Then reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wits end. And I'm not going to stand here and lie to you. There are times you will be at your wits end. But my brothers and my sisters learn to give it to the Lord. Verse 28. Then they cry out of trouble in the Lord. That's the next time where it says, Lord, help. Lord, help. I'm in a messed up situation. I don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm going to do. Lord, help. I'm in my wit's end. Lord, my wife has left me. I'm at my wit's end. Some woman is saying my husband has left me. I'm at my wit's end. They're going to fire me next Friday. I'm at my wit's end. My children are acting crazy. I'm at my wit's end. The value of my house has gone down. I'm at my wit's end. I don't know if I can, can trust the Democrat or the Republicans. I don't know who to trust. Trust in the Lord. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm at my wit's end. What you can do is say, Lord, help me in the name of Jesus. Lord, keep me in the name of Jesus. Then they cried out, Lord, help in their trouble. Verse 8, and he brings them out of the distress. Listen to verse 29. He calms the storm so that its waves are still, and they are glad because they are quiet. He so he guides them to a desired haven. Listen in verse 31. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. So, my brothers and sisters, you might be tonight listening to this message and you're at your wit's end or who knows next week from now you might be at your wit's end but learn to give it to Jesus that same Jesus in John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have ever lasting life. Romans the first chapter, verse 3 and 4, concerning his son Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born out of the seed of David according to the flesh. Listen at verse 4, and decided to be the son of, declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead stay there in the power of the resurrection because he raised Jesus from the dead. That same Jesus that died on that cross was put in a borrowed tomb but got up on the third day morning with all power in his hand. That same Jesus. So stay there and follow him in the spirit of holiness and in the power of the
the resurrection. Yes, I know sometimes you're at your wit's end. I know sometimes you want to go crazy, but give it to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Stay in the power of holiness and in the power of the resurrection.